Okay, so it's a, it's a great pleasure to be here with you today to share some recent findings that we've made throughout this year. So as I'm sure many of you are aware, unfortunately, a large number of people in the community are touched by cancer. And in the case of breast cancer, unfortunately, one in eight women will be impacted by breast cancer in their lifetime. Unfortunately, the mortalities associated with breast cancer are actually due to the metastatic spread of that cancer. So that is the process whereby the cancer spreads from the primary tumour in the breast to other parts of the body. What's less well appreciated is that the cancer, this, the metastasis that occurs in the case of breast cancer and other cancers such as breast and prostate cancer, I'm just trying to move something out of the way, 75% um, of these occur in the case of, occur in the bone, in the skeleton. So for us to really improve outcomes and prevent bone metastases in patients and improve survival in patients with metastatic cancer, we need to have a better understanding of the processes that control this. So what we do understand about um, cancers that grow in bones, that they arrive in the bone environment and from the, the blood vessels. So they break away from the primary site, they come through the blood vessels and they arrive then in the bone environment. We do know then that these cells, tumor cells, can actually live in a dormant or sleep-like state for really long periods of time, in some cases up to 20 years, and they're undetectable in this state until something happens that actually switches these tumor cells on or wakes them up to grow into these destructive tumors, and then they start to produce factors that actually break down and, and drive destruction of the bone by these cells here, which are the osteoclasts. But really the question is, and the question we're trying to answer in our, our group is, what is it that's waking these tumor cells up? So these dormant tumor cells that are in this sleep-like state that then get activated and, and start to grow to form these tumors, what is it that's driving this process of waking these tumor cells up? Because if we can understand this better, we might be able to stop this happening. And in particular, our group's been focusing on, well, what role do these cells that live in bones, such as these osteoclasts, play in controlling these processes? So in order for us to really understand this well, our group has been focused for a number of years now on developing techniques that allow us to actually visualize and see these cells inside living bone tissue so that we can really get a handle on what's going on here. So we've used really high power microscopes to image through the intact cortex of the bone or the shell of the bone into the marrow space, which is the space inside the bone. And what we're looking at here, and this is images we've taken um, using this approach, is we're looking down on the bone surface inside the bone and we're looking at these osteoclasts. And these osteoclasts, their job is to resorb bone or eat away at your bone tissue. Um, and they're, they're, they're a very important cell because they help maintain your bone um, integrity because then when they resorb bone, we get new bone that's made. In the case of osteoporosis, we have too many of these cells eating away at bone and so we lose bone. And in the case of cancer, unfortunately, when the tumor cells are growing in bone, they actually make more osteoclasts and that's what drives away, it, um, drives the loss of bone in, in patients with bone cancer. But what we've been able to show using this technique is we can see these red osteoclasts, but we can also look at the tumor cells. You see these little green blobs are actually cancer cells inside bone. And you can see in this zoomed up image here that these green cancer cells can sit right next to osteoclasts. What we've also been able to show is if we have more osteoclasts, so if we increase the, the number of osteoclasts using agents we know drive the growth of osteoclasts, we actually get a lot more tumor cells. We get this tumor mass that's growing that's very different to these individual tumor cells, and then they're causing a lot of destruction. So clearly there's something going on where the osteoclasts being, having more osteoclasts, we get more tumor growth. So the osteoclasts are playing a role in this process. This is just coming back to a diagram that's just to show you what I've just described to you is we know these tumor cells arrive in bone and they can sit right next to osteoclasts when they sit there in a sleep-like state. But when we have a lot more osteoclasts, we can actually wake, the, they're actually waking these tumor cells up and driving the growth of the tumor that then leads to um, uh, tumor bone loss, sorry, and also the spread of tumor to other sites. So we really want to understand better how these osteoclasts are waking these tumor cells up to really impact and um, provide better treatments and prevent this disease. So the next step we looked into is, well, can we look at how these cells behave in real time? Can we make videos and watch them actually move around inside bone? And that's what we've been doing for the past few years. In particular this year, what we've learned using this approach is that the osteoclasts behave in a really different way to what we really understood. So these are big red blobs here, our osteoclasts, and they're, what they're actually doing here is they're undergoing cycles of cell fission and fusion. This means the osteoclasts are breaking up to form smaller cells and then actually refusing to make larger cells with other osteoclasts. 
and we call this osteoclast recycling. And they're hugely dynamic cells, and, and this is a process we never really understood these cells could do because we've never been able to look at their behaviour inside living bone tissue before. So this was a really huge discovery in the field of bone biology. And this diagram just here shows what we've learned is that these cells, previously what we understood is that these osteoclasts form through the fusion of these small cells to form these large multinucleated cells. They've got lots of nuclei in them that resorb bone. And then they just undergo apoptosis, which is cell death. They die when they've finished their job. But using our imaging approach, what we've learned is these cells actually undergo cycles of fission and fusion and recycling. And this is a really exciting discovery in the field because this cell here, the recycling osteoclast, we just determined is actually quite a distinct cell from these two cells. So it's actually defined a completely new cell inside bone. And this was something we published earlier this year in a high-level journal cell. So what does this mean to the growth of cancers in bone? Well, now we can actually look at this dynamic behaviour of osteoclasts whilst they're sitting next to tumour cells. So in this movie here, I'm showing you firstly the tumour cells. So these are our green tumour cells. That you can see are actually moving, growing, interacting with each other inside bone. But now when we look at the osteoclasts as well in the movie, we can actually see they're interacting with the osteoclasts. So these osteoclasts here are moving, they're undergoing that dynamic behaviour right next to the tumour cells and they're touching each other and interacting. So clearly the dynamic behaviour of osteoclasts plays a huge role in how these tumour cells are behaving and that's what we're working to unravel next. So what I've shown you so far is that using our exciting new bone imaging technique, we have shown that osteoclasts, we've discovered that osteoclasts undergo these cycles of fission and fusion and this led to the discovery of a completely new cell inside our living bone tissue. I've also shown you that using this technique, we can see that osteoclasts and tumour cells interact directly and touch each other inside bone. And I've shown you that when we have more osteoclasts and we increase how many osteoclasts we have, we're actually waking up more of those dormant tumour cells and stimulating the growth of tumours in bone. I didn't really have time to show you today because I've only got 10 minutes, but we've also shown if we, if we block resorption of os by osteoclasts, so we have less osteoclasts with a drug called bisphosphonates that are used to manage bone loss in osteoporosis, but they're also used in patients with metastatic bone cancer, we can actually reduce the growth of the tumour. So clearly these osteoclasts are playing a role. So the next question is, well, what about this new drug, denosumab? Denosumab is really commonly used now in the management of patients with osteoporosis and is becoming more regularly used. It's called Exgeva for the management of bone loss and to stop bone loss in patients that have uh, bone metastatic cancers. Now, unfortunately, when it comes to denosumab, what we've learned in the case of, of using this drug in, in patients with osteoporosis is that when patients have to stop their treatment with denosumab, which is unfortunately is the case for a number of patients for a number of reasons, they end up losing a lot of bone. So this is a graph here that shows patients treated with denosumab, they get increasing their bone because you're blocking their osteoclast eating it away. But then when they come off within a year, they're having a rapid loss of bone. So why are they losing this bone? Is it because there's more osteoclasts? And this is something that we've recently shown as part of that work we published in Cell earlier this year, is we can model this in the lab and we can see that when we give denosumab, we can get a lot more bone, but then when we stop treatment, we actually lose bone really quickly like we see in patients. And why is this happening? Well, that's because we've got a lot more osteoclasts eating away at that bone. So this is a measure of osteoclasts and we see that that's hugely increased in the case during withdrawal. So what does this mean to cancer? Well, this could actually be quite detrimental because as I showed you earlier, when we have more osteoclasts, we get more growth of tumour. So if a patient was to come off their denosumab or exgeva and they have dormant tumour cells in their skeleton, it could actually lead to waking them up. And that's something that we're working on. What we're also working on is, well, could we look at giving these patients another drug to stop this rebound bone loss or rebound increase in osteoclasts? And this is exactly what we were able to show in our studies, is this blue line, this blue line here and the purple line, is that if we give, um, during the withdrawal phase, we give a bisphosphonate, zeledronate, we can actually stop that bone loss from happening. So this is the ones without the bisphosphonate, so the denosumab is stopped and they're really losing a lot of bone and that bone loss is stopped. And most importantly, this is stopped by stopping that increase in osteoclasts. So these ones here didn't get that bisphosphonate, they weren't protected, they had lots of osteoclasts. But when we gave that bisphosphonate, we were able to stop that. So this is a really exciting finding for us because we can now look at, right, well, if a patient needs to stop that treatment, we can give them another treatment 
And if we think that, that, that this might wake up their dormant tumor cells and stimulate growth of cancer in bone, we could actually stop that from happening. So where do we go to from here? As I said, we want to definitely show in our models that if we stop denosumab therapy, we do wake up those dormant tumor cells. And that's what we're working on at the moment is to really show that clearly and provide that evidence. And we then want to show, well, we know if we give a bisphosphonate after withdrawal of denosumab, we'll stop the osteoclast and does that then stop that increase in tumor cell activation and tumor growth. And what we hope this will lead to is the use increased use of these anti-resorptive drugs that block osteoclasts in patients that have cancers or at risk of getting their cancer growing in bone and might actually not only protect their bone from destruction but also stop the growth of cancers there. And importantly, if we can show that if a patient is already on denosumab and has to stop for any reason, they could be put on a bisphosphonate instead and this could actually stop any chance of waking up their dormant tumor cells and driving what we call disease recurrence. So with that, I'd like to thank a huge team of people that have contributed to this work, in particular Peter Croucher, who drives our bone biology group, and Tree Fan, who's been instrumental to driving uh, that intravital imaging or that imaging technique that we're using. And most importantly, we've had a lot of philanthropic support that supported this from the Ernest Heine Family Foundation, which has been really pivotal to us achieving these findings. Thank you.